Along with the additional traffic on the turnpike this holiday weekend, there will be extra state police patrols out on the roads as well to ensure that motorists comply with speed limits, seatbelt laws, and other traffic regulations, and to make sure that everyone has a safe holiday weekend on the turnpike. The first victim went down into that tank to try and unclog a drain. When he didn't emerge, the second victim went in to try and help. But he was immediately overcome by the fumes as well. And when rescue workers arrived on the scene, they realized they were too late to save the men. Neighbors who refused to be interviewed on camera say the suspect lived here at this mobile home with his uncle. And they say the cramped quarters may have helped contribute to the argument. For fans who are starved for baseball during this strike, the minor leagues could be just the ticket. The parking's free, the hot dogs are still a buck, and you can come out and watch tomorrow's major leaguers today. Every day here at Camp Cadet is completely structured for these young people. They're up by 6 a.m., they're in bed by 10, and all day long they do exercises, drills, and even have some fun as well. This symposium helps these teachers learn new techniques that they can take back to their own classrooms this fall. It's also a way to share ideas and experiences with other area teachers. You may think that starting school early would be a bummer for most students, but those I spoke with didn't seem to mind. They'll be able to get an extra week of work and get a jump on summer vacation next June. In college football news, the Penn State Nittany Lions will be without their leading tackler for the first two games of the season. Linebacker Brian Gelshizer has a sprained knee and is expected to miss the Lions' season opener against Minnesota on September 3rd, and he could also miss the home opener September 10th against Southern Cal. Well, the news in baseball today is no news. <laughs> Day 15 of the baseball strike, and there is no end in sight. The owners and players broke off talks yesterday, and no new talks are scheduled. Players union officials say that the next round of talks may not happen until the middle of next week at the earliest, and the owners are talking about the possibility of playing the World Series later than October at a warm weather neutral site. Uh, minor League Baseball tonight, the Reading Phillies visit Bowie, and the Harrisburg Senators host New Haven. Mr. Floriati says he wants the landlord of 1011 to clean up the trash and get rid of the roach problem, and if the landlord doesn't take care of it, Mr. Floriati says he will. Residents here on Ashland Street wanted the township to pick up the tab for the paving of this road, but when their request was denied, they took up a collection and raised the money for this new road themselves. Shade says tearing down this historic building and replacing it with a state-of-the-art office complex will add to the revitalization of downtown Reading and add hundreds of new jobs to the local economy. The proposed Civic Center would include the renovation of the Raja Theater, which would be used for smaller events, and the construction of a new multi-purpose arena here at 7th and Penn, which would be used for concerts and larger events. And the mayor says a new arena would mean great things for downtown Reading. If you're planning to stop by the Cherry Fair, bring your appetite, because you'll find all kinds of delicious foods made with cherries. The accident at this unmanned pumping station was caused by a mechanical malfunction and human error. City officials say a new system will be put into place to ensure that this kind of mishap doesn't happen again. Everyone involved with Hogar Crea is a recovering addict dedicated to helping other addicts overcome their addictions and spread the word about the dangers of drug use. Well, reports out of Columbus, Ohio say that former heavyweight champion Buster Douglas entered a hospital yesterday and has improved after slipping into a diabetic coma. Uh, Douglas is best known for knocking out former heavyweight champ Mike Tyson in Japan four and a half years ago. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Rossi. Scott's off tonight. The Flyers made a move to shore up their defense today. We'll tell you about that in a minute. But first, the Phils and Padres wrapping up a series in San Diego. The Phils trying to rebound from last night's 7-2 loss and get out of San Diego with a win. Score tied at one in the fourth. Milt Thompson with the seeing eye single. Todd Pratt comes around to score. The Phils go up 2-1. to one. Padres come right back, however, in the fourth. Phil Clark, forget about it. It's a two-run shot. Over the wall and left, and the Padres take a 3-2 lead off Phil's pitcher, David West. Meanwhile, former Philly Donnie Elliott, remember him on the mound for the Padres? He strikes out the side in the eighth with the bases loaded. He gets Jordan right here. He gets Incavilia right there, and he also would get Todd Pratt. And Donnie Elliott is cruising along trying to preserve the win. Bottom of the eighth, the Padres get some insurance. And the RBI single right here by Eddie Williams. Craig Shipley scores to make it 4-2. to two. The Padres would add one more to go on to win. 5-2 to two the final. LYH TV 15. CBS for York. 
Tonight, the two-time defending Super Bowl champions get a final tune-up before their season opener against the Steelers. Barry's boys travel to Bayou Country to face the Saints and their new quarterback, Jim Everett. It's the Saints and the Cowboys on August 25th, 1994, in the Sports Corner. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Rossi. The baseball strike continues. We'll have the latest on the negotiations coming up. But first, the NFL regular season is just around the corner, and the two-time defending Super Bowl champs, the Dallas Cowboys, are gearing up for another run at the title. Tonight, the Cowboys travel to New Orleans to take on the Saints. And Barry Switzer trying to fill some big shoes, those of Jimmy Johnson. This is about the only Cowboys highlight. Joe Fishback with the block punt. That would lead to a Chris Boniel field goal to make it 3 to nothing. Saints rookie Mario Bates tucks it in from one and gives New Orleans a 7-3 lead. Score 13-14-3. Uh, Derek Brown right there adds this four-yard TD run, and it's 21-3. Quarterback Wade Wilson battling Jim Everett for the starting job. Hits rookie Steve Rem, 52 yards for the score. And the final, Saints win 28-10, handing Dallas the loss. On to Indianapolis, where the Browns and the Colts doing battle. And that's touchdown Tommy Vardell for the first uh, touchdown of the game, a one-yarder, 7-0 Brownies. Then Jim Harbaugh hits rookie Marshall Falk, 72 yards for the score. He's going to be something special. And former Redskin Mark Rippon now with the Browns. New team, same result as last year for Rippon. That's Leonard Humphrey picks this one off and goes all the way for the score. And right now in the third quarter, it's 17 to seven Colts lead. All strike continues tonight. Two days of talks between the players and the owners have produced nothing except more bad blood between the two sides. Stood ahead of time that uh, we thought these meetings would produce mostly a, uh, a cheer session for Dick and the salary cap, and that's mostly what they produced. Because um, that wasn't surprising. Um, there has been no movement. There's no indication there's going to be any movement. Um, as I can see it, the, the clubs are exactly where they plan to be. No talks are scheduled, but there could be some in the future. To Williamsport, the semifinals of the Little League World Series, Venezuela and Saudi Arabia. First inning, Venezuela's Eric Villalobos smacks a two-run shot. Then his teammate, same inning, Eduardo Ferrer with a two-run shot of his own. And then to the fifth, it's Ferrer again, another two-run blast. That puts Venezuela up 7-1. to one. Same inning, you guessed it, another home run. This one a three-run shot by Esteban Avila. That makes it 10-1, to one, and that was the final. Venezuela goes on to win the champion, uh, to the championship. They'll take on Northridge, California. Well, another World Series, this one in golf from Akron, Ohio. And that is the shark, Greg Norman, with the nice putt right there. And John Daly, not known for his putts, more known for his drives, sinks the bird on 15. Then Jose Maria Olathabal with a nice approach shot from the bunker right here. And he would sink the ensuing birdie putt. Then it's Craig Stadler on 18 with the birdie of his own. He shot a 65. It is tied for the lead with Lauren Roberts after that round of play. And we'll be back with more on the sports quarter right after this. Stay with us. Everybody, welcome back to the Sports Corner. Some uh, news out of the NBA. Moses Malone has signed a contract. His 21st season, he'll play for the San Antonio Spurs. He's 39 years old. He spent last year, of course, with the 76ers. From the NFL, pro football, uh, Pittsburgh's place kicker Gary Anderson has reported to camp, decided to end his holdout. He was asking for a contract extension. Uh, he wanted about a million dollars for a new contract. That's going to do it for us here at the Sports Corner. Thanks a lot. Have a great night. Can I have a great weekend here in addition to that great week we had here all week well, long? Well, as we said yesterday, there were some uh, chances of thunderstorms at any time for the next few days. We had a bunch of them roll through last night, and uh, that is still the case. It could happen, but overall, you should look for a pretty nice weekend. Uh, today, it got a little warmer, if you notice, than it was at the beginning of the week as the clouds kind of rolled out. We uh, hit a high of 83. It felt a little stickier than that because of the humidity. 
The low was 82 degrees, uh, 65. The normals are 82 and 62. Right now, still partly sunny and 81 degrees. Southwest winds right now at 7 miles an hour. And as we check the relative humidity, 67%. The barometers at 30.11 and falling. No rain right now, but as I mentioned, you could have a thunderstorm at any time, depending on where you are at any time this weekend. Current temperatures around the Susquehanna Valley, Lebanon, it's 84. Harrisburg, 83. York, it's 82. Lancaster hanging on at 81. Philadelphia still at 85 degrees out west. Pittsburgh at 84 and Erie at 82. And as we check the national maps, we'll see a high pressure system still hanging on. There's that line of thunderstorms that we were talking about yesterday that could bring us the thunderstorms at any time. As it comes right over us tonight, you could see another nasty boomer at any time, but uh, it should be a quick one. And then they'll clear out for the most part. There is still a chance on Saturday and Sunday that we may see a, a quick passing thunderstorm, but overall it'll be partly cloudy, and we'll check that in the extended forecast coming up. But right now the call for tonight, it's going to be a little bit warmer than it's been over the last few nights, a low of around 67 light winds and um, it should be pretty comfortable for sleeping anyway. Partly sunny tomorrow, high near 84. Tomorrow night it'll be clear and nice, a low of 65. And the extended forecast for Sunday, you'll see it's uh, gonna be partly sunny in mid 80s still as the temperatures hang around that mid 80 degree point. And Monday it'll be a little warmer, 87. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, look for those thunderstorms to roll in, highs 87 and 85 degrees. So the chance of a shower any point during the weekend, but overall it should be pretty good. You should get most of your plans in. So maybe bring the umbrella, but leave it in the car. Bring it along with you just in case <laughs> you, you might need it. Okay, thank you, Mike. A lightning. And Mike Rossi is now with a quick look back at the weather. And please tell me this is just going to hang around here. We're getting spoiled by all this good weather around Pinch here. Pinch me, I'm dreaming, right? It's, uh, <laughs> it's been really nice earlier in the week. The clouds have rolled in a little bit, but still no rain. Uh, nice mild temperatures, not too hot. It's going to stick with us maybe through the weekend. Just the chance of a couple thunderstorms on Sunday. We'll see that as we get to the extended forecast in a little bit. But right now, today, we had a high of 83, the normal 82, so we're right where we should be. The low, 63, normal low is 62. Currently, we have partly sunny skies, 83 degrees, a little bit of a breeze, not too bad. Uh, it's keeping those cool temperatures and uh, keeping the uh, skies pretty much rain-free right now. The relative humidity as we will see is 65 percent barometers at 30.14 and falling no rain in the skies now as i mentioned we do have a chance of some uh, thunderstorms coming up on sunday we'll see that in just a second current temperatures lebanon 79 harrisburg 83 york 81 lancaster 80 reading 84 philadelphia 82 and as we look out west 77 in erie and 85 in pittsburgh the national map show us a high pressure system just hanging on some showers up around maine and through new england and a low pressure system coming through, which could bring us those thunderstorms this weekend. But for the most part, it should be just partly cloudy and the temperatures uh, should hover around the mid 80 point and then get a little warmer as the week comes on. There's the thunderstorm line just to the west of us as we hit on Saturday. That could bring us the rain on Sunday. But the call for tonight looks like partly cloudy skies and a low of 63. The light winds will continue and tomorrow it will uh, be a nice day tomorrow. Uh, regardless of what that says, it'll be partly sunny and we'll have highs around uh, 87 degrees in the mid 80s. Also on Saturday as well, 87 on Saturday there, 86 on Sunday. And all those three days, tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday, look like partly cloudy. Just a chance of a spritz somewhere along the line. Monday, bright sunshine, high 84, another great day. And as we hit to Tuesday, 86 and partly sunny once again. Liking that forecast. Looks good. Yeah, yeah it's going to stick around or any chance of some rain up in the future? Get that umbrella out or I'm, I'm going to uh, put it away for I good. I can only yet. see as far as Tuesday, but it looks good <laughs> up until then. And uh, you should be able to get all your plans in this weekend if you're good. going to the shore. It looks uh, pretty nice down there as well. All right, wonderful. Thank you, Mike. When it was dedicated in 1939, Lebanon High Stadium was viewed as one of the finest outdoor sports facilities in central Pennsylvania. But over 50 years of use and decay have taken its toll. Now some former students are trying to restore this old stadium to its past glory. Save Our Stadium is a private, non-profit organization trying to raise money for this renovation project. What we're trying to do is uh, redo the stadium walls and the, uh, the stadium in itself. 
It's 55 years old. It was dedicated in 1939, and we're trying to repoint the bricks and redo some of the internal structure of the overall stadium. But the, the biggest job is, is the brick wall, and the, the brick architecture is what we'd like to maintain. Uh, structurally, it's very, very sound, uh, but it's had some wear over the past 55 years. Shoulders says that renovating this old stadium makes more economic sense than tearing it down and replacing it with a chain link fence and some new bleachers. And most alumni feel that this stadium has a lot of character and history. It would be a shame to keep tearing something down that has such significance and meant so much and means so much to so many people. I believe uh, that the, the alumni here will, will respond and uh, donate enough money so that this can be refurbished. To date, Save Our Stadium has raised about $7,000 toward its goal and hopes to finish the renovation project by the 1997 season, which marks the 100th year of football at Lebanon High School. In Lebanon, Mike Rossi, Action News 15. A fire last March at this house on the 1000 block of Penn Street has caused big problems for neighbors who live next to the house. But it's not smoke or water damage that has these neighbors upset. The problem is roaches. Thousands of these creepy critters have invaded the home of Basil Floriani and other homes on this block. The roaches are so bad, people who live here say they can't even eat or sleep at night. We can't sleep at night. When we do sleep, it's with the light on because we don't want them to, you know, come walking up on us. It's awful. We can't, every summer we used to sit out here on the steps in the evening, and we can't do that. There's, there's, there's roaches coming over all the time, and if it's not the roaches, it's the spray that we put down. We don't want to sit down on them because of the spray, but uh, we never had this problem before. The Florianis took their concerns to the city, and officials ordered the property owner to exterminate the house, but the roaches won't go away. The Floriani's are fed up. And I just wish something could be done. I wish you could clean a trash out once and for all and get it sprayed because until he gets the, um, the trash out of there, all the spraying is not going to do anything. Mr. Floriani says he wants the landlord of 1011 to clean up the trash and get rid of the roach problem. And if the landlord doesn't take care of it, Mr. Floriani says he will. It shouldn't happen to anybody and we're going to do something about it if I have to physically break into the place and shovel out the, the garbage. Nobody, no, my family's not going to be uh, submerged uh, or, or uh, have a breakdown. I'm going to do something about it. City officials say the property owner has 10 days to deal with the roaches or he may face fines. Meanwhile, the Florianis must continue to fight these critters as best they can. In Reading, Mike Rossi, Action News 15. A little bit of Broadway has come to downtown Reading. The musical West Side Story is being performed this week at City Park. Production crews were working on the many technical aspects of the show, and the cast members were busy rehearsing their lines this morning for what promises to be a great performance. Absolutely, absolutely. This is not to be missed. This is absolutely not to be missed in, in Reading theater history. Buy your ticket, get your butt down here, see this show. The show's director says he hopes this will be the first of many theater productions in the park. Well, if it goes well, I think the city of Reading, who's also been very cooperative, wants to talk about maybe doing regular theater in the park, just like they're doing the Meridian concerts in the park. This show features local actors and actresses from around the Reading area. It's also a Broadway-style production with an elaborate stage and lighting setup. And all the money raised from this show goes to Hogar Crea, an organization that battles drug abuse. Hogar Crea is an alcohol and drug, drug rehabilitation uh, center for Latin Americans specifically. It was uh, 25 years ago, I think it was founded in Puerto Rico, and they brought it up to Reading. In fact, uh, one or two of our cast members, they have, uh, they have had somebody who's been through the program, so they came out, tried out, said it was for a good cause. Tickets for this production of West Side Story are available now for the performances on August 4th, 6th, and 7th. In Reading, Mike Rossi, Action News 15. Mike Rossi takes us to the Pennsylvania Turnpike tonight, where officials say they're gearing up for the busy weekend. As this holiday weekend approaches, many people will hit the road for their last trip of the summer. 
The Labor Day weekend is usually one of the busiest traffic weekends on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Officials say construction should not cause any additional congestion on the Turnpike this weekend. They also say there are a few steps drivers can take to make their trip safer and more enjoyable. Well, we have the call boxes where if they have an incident, they can report it immediately right to the state police and get help. We have the service plazas. We hope they'll stop so they don't get fatigued on their trip and uh, take a little rest. Uh, in our reconstruction uh, zones, we will have them open to the extent that it is possible. That means that for the most extent, they will not impede traffic during the holiday season. Along with the additional traffic on the turnpike this holiday weekend, there will be extra state police patrols out on the roads as well to ensure that motorists comply with speed limits, seatbelt laws, and other traffic regulations, and to make sure that everyone has a safe holiday weekend on the turnpike. Our patrols are going to be out uh, emphasizing a 55 mile an hour speed limit by strict enforcement. We are asking motorists to stay alert, uh, to drive defensively, uh, to not become fatigued and try to continue a trip uh, when they find themselves when they uh, find themselves getting tired to pull over to take a break uh, and just drive very cautiously because there's going to be a lot of traffic on the roadway. Turnpike officials hope that you will take it easy on the roads this weekend and they want you to know that you're never alone on the turnpike. In Mount Gretna, Mike Rossi, Action News 15. Sports is from Hershey Foods tonight. It's all part of a special business expo. Action News reporter Mike Rossi has more. Dozens of minority and women-owned businesses were participating in a business expo sponsored by the Hershey Foods Corporation. It's the seventh annual Business Supplier Day. Purchasing personnel from Hershey Foods were sharing information with representatives from over 80 minority and women-owned businesses from across the country. This is a way to break the ice, so to speak, and provide an entree into the corporation, puts a name with a face, and provides that person-to-person uh, -person contact for them to uh, develop a business relationship. So it is an extra special thing that uh, we do in this regard to uh, facilitate that process. This expo is a chance for women and minority-owned businesses to get their foot in the door with a Fortune 500 company such as Hershey Foods. These business owners say they're not looking for a handout, they just want the opportunity. The opportunity to uh, give our pitch, uh, the opportunity to bid on some of the items that they're purchasing, and to prove ourselves. And uh, there are many companies uh, that are... Be hitting the highways to visit family and for get-togethers. Action News reporter Mike Rossi, t Mike Rossi takes us to the Pennsylvania Turnpike tonight, where officials say they're gearing up for the busy weekend. As this holiday weekend approaches, many people will hit the road. Turnpike officials hope that you will take it easy on the roads this weekend, and they want you to know that you're never alone on the turnpike. In Mount Gretna, Mike Rossi, Action News 15. Sports is from Hershey Foods tonight. It's all part of a special business expo. Action News reporter Mike Rossi has more. Fat from the... ...their business and prosper. In Hershey, Mike Rossi... Still the country. Recipient. ...are continuing their quest tonight to cut down on the city's budget. As Action News reporter Mike Rossi tells us, another proposal was issued today. With an operating budget deficit of more than $2 million, Reading City officials are looking at ways to trim some of the fat from the city budget. The latest idea comes from city controller Tom Diana. He has proposed a plan to reduce comp time accumulated by city management employees. Currently, these managers must take comp time in lieu of overtime pay. This comp time can be used like vacation time, and according to Diana, some city managers have plenty of time coming to them. For, uh, there's 40 management employees in City Hall who have over 100 comp hours of comp time, which is equivalent to paid vacation, up to 1,930 hours for the top uh, amount, and I think this is clearly unacceptable. This proposal includes a cap on the amount of comp time a city manager can accumulate, and according to Diana, this new comp time policy would bring Reading more in line with other cities in the state. 
other than Pittsburgh, all the other cities have uh, tighter controls over comp time usage than uh, Reading, including Lebanon, by the way. Initial reaction from the mayor and city council has been positive. Although the mayor says there is a need for a more in-depth look into this problem. Uh, the compensatory time issue actually does have to be looked at in relation to overall uh, uh, work responsibilities. And uh, actually the busiest people and the hardest workers are going to rack up the most comp time. And if that's true, then uh, I think the total compensation packages uh, that are available to some of these key bureau people maybe needs to be revisited also. While no action on the comp time issue is expected anytime soon, most agree it's a problem that needs to be addressed. In Reading, Mike Rossi, Action News 15. Members, this Ralph Lauren are still concerned with bacteria threatening their tap water tonight, and those affected are being asked to boil their water until further notice. Action News reporter Mike Rossi has more. Some 29,000 residents in the Hershey, Palmyra, Anvil area are still being advised to boil their water before using it for internal consumption. The advisory has been in effect since Saturday when testing at the Pennsylvania American Water Company uncovered high levels of E. coli bacteria in the water system. So on Saturday, we read a number of bacteriological samples that were collected in our service territory, and several of them had the presence of coliform bacteria. We immediately got contacted our Department of Environmental Resources and determined with them that because the bacteria were present in the system that we should issue a precautionary boil water advisory. Officials aren't sure how long this advisory will remain in effect, but they're telling everyone to boil their water for at least one minute before using it. Or you can do like they're doing here at Lebanon Valley College and use bottled water instead. Students at Lebanon Valley College are receiving free spring water to use until the contamination problem is solved. It's been like a really big annoyance and it's just the showers, everything. You can't get a shower, you can't brush your teeth without like using spring water and it's just been a really big annoyance. Meanwhile, crews continue to try to find the cause of the contamination, which can cause diarrhea, nausea and several other symptoms. Anyone experiencing any of these symptoms should immediately consult a physician. In Hershey, Mike Rossi, Action News 15. PennDOT, a month away, election officials and candidates alike are getting the word out to encourage people to get out and vote. In Lebanon, one group's making that process a little easier for certain county residents. Action News reporter Mike Rossi has the story. For many disabled Americans, casting their vote on election day can be difficult. Although many polling places are now accessible to the disabled, voter registration can still be a challenge. But one Lebanon Valley organization is trying to make it easier for disabled persons in the area to register for the upcoming election. Developmental and Disability Services of Lebanon Valley is holding a field voter registration drive to aid disabled voters. We felt that um, perhaps they didn't know really where they could go to register to vote. Uh, they were not familiar with the voting apparatus if they did want to get out to, to vote. We also have applications here for absentee uh, voter ballots in, in the event that they're going to be out of town or that their disability um, prevents them from getting out and going to vote. Many times it's difficult for persons with disabilities to register to vote and that may cause them to become discouraged about the voting process. But this program offers assistance and information on registration and makes that voting process a lot easier. Well, I think it encourages those people who maybe have a physical disability and can't get out to a regular uh, area to register to come into our facility, which is already handicapped accessible and we're knowledgeable in assisting people with disabilities. So it makes it a whole lot easier for them and probably less threatening. Anyone who could not attend this field voter registration drive can receive assistance by contacting Developmental and Disability Services of Lebanon Valley. In Lebanon, Mike Rossi, Action News 15. Employees of the Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. The theme of their celebration is Hispanic Vision, Future Challenges and Opportunities. And the program highlights the experiences and culture of Hispanics in the United States. The program is designed to create better understanding within the Department of Labor and Industry to help those in the department work better together. Well, it's always important to recognize cultural diversity, and in our department, we deal so much with the public uh, that it's important for our folks to really understand the differences between people and the similarities. 
This program is a celebration of Hispanic culture and helps bridge the gap between Hispanics and other ethnic groups. And with more than 300,000 persons of Hispanic descent in Pennsylvania, it's important to share cultural experiences and create a better understanding among everyone. I think it builds a better understanding both within the department and between the department and the people that they deal with. It's a learning experience. It's a way of telling people, you know, we have these difficulties when we come here. And we are here for many different reasons because each group has their own personal reason of coming here. Governor Casey has designated September 15th through October 15th as Hispanic Heritage Month in Pennsylvania to honor the contributions and accomplishments of the state's Hispanic population. In Harrisburg, Mike Rossi, Action News 15. Lancaster General Hospital unveiled its new health tells us tonight this year promises to be a flu-ridden one. Some local senior citizens were taking advantage of free flu shots today. It's all part of the American Lung Association of Central Pennsylvania's effort to immunize those who are at high risk of contracting influenza. This is expected to be a severe flu season, especially for the elderly and persons suffering from lung disease and other ailments. According to the American Lung Association, the flu is much more than just a bad cold. It can also be deadly. A lot of people think that influenza is just a bad cold. It is not. It's a very serious lung infection, and it can kill you. And it's a lot better to get the flu shot and not get the flu than to have to take the complications that may come with getting the flu. With experts predicting a severe flu season this year, the American Lung Association is urging everyone, especially those 65 and older, to get a flu shot, which can reduce the chance of getting influenza up to 75%. Okay. And it doesn't hurt. Yeah, approximately 75% of people who get the flu shot will not get the flu. Of the other people who still get the flu, it will probably be much less severe than it would have been had they not gotten a flu shot. People 65 and over have about 100-fold more complications than people under 65. So it's tremendously important that they have this as a part of their preventive health care. The American Lung Association says that about every 10 years, a flu virus strain appears that is dramatically different from other strains. So they urge everyone to get a yearly flu shot in order to reduce the chance of getting the flu. In Harrisburg, Mike Rossi, Action News 15. Sports is next and has more. Reading Education Center now has a state-of-the-art computer system, thanks to some local businesses. The VF Corporation, Meridian Bank, and IBM came together to purchase the new system at a total cost of $700,000. School administrators had asked for two new computers for the school and wound up with 70. There are 300 kids. Two computers would, uh, would hardly give anybody any air time, let alone teaching time. So we began to think a little bit outside the box, and that turned into uh, a requirement to have a full-scale computer lab and to have teaching units in, in every key classroom. These computers enable teachers to target the specific academic needs of each individual student and design a curriculum based on those individual needs. And they also allow the teachers to keep track of the performance and progress of each student in the classroom. Every student in here could be working on something totally different. Uh, we would know exactly what they're doing. We will know how many things they have correct, how many things they have wrong. We can then tailor remediation for that. The computers are, are proactive or kid active. Uh, they actually help the student along and say, try this, try that, or seek help. The Reading Education Center is an alternative learning institution that helps kids from at-risk backgrounds. These computers help give this school and these kids the edge they'll need to have a successful future. I want to go to business, a business school, so this, this will give me some background on that. Because everywhere I go, I see computers, you know, everywhere, cash registers, or, you know, everything. In Reading, Mike Rossi, Action News 15. Still to come tonight on Action News, some chance at instant fortune. The Pennsylvania Lottery's introduced a brand new game, and as Action News reporter Mike Rossi tells us, it's all in the cards. Lottery players in Pennsylvania have another way to win. It's the brand new Hearts and Diamonds game from the Pennsylvania Lottery. The first drawing for the new game is tonight, and players are lining up to take a chance at the $20,000 weekly jackpot. But this game is different from other lottery games. 
this is an all quick pick game. Just like in regular cards, nobody picks their own cards. In Hearts and Diamonds, you'll go to your retailer, you'll ask for a Hearts and Diamonds ticket, you'll press a button on his machine, and you'll get a ticket. If your five cards match our five cards, you can win up to $20,000 or even more. This new lottery game is expected to bring in about $26 million a year, and that's good news for the state. And the good news for those who play this game is that the odds of winning are much better than other lottery games. Actually, as jackpot games go, the odds are pretty good. They're 65,000 to 1. Now, Cash 5 is a 565,000 to 1 game. Wild Card Lotto is a 6 million to 1 game. Super 7 is a 14 million to 1 game. Lottery officials hope this new game will boost sales, and players are hoping the low odds will mean big bucks. Well, it's, uh, it can go up to 20,000, I heard. So that would be pretty nice. Sales for Hearts and Diamonds have been strong, but retailers believe they'll get even better once people see the new game and understand how to play. A lot of people don't understand exactly what's going on with the game, and even after you explain it to them, they don't understand. And once it's drawn, I think they'll see, and they'll say, oh, wow, that was really easy, and, and play it. So if you play Hearts and Diamonds, here's hoping that good luck is in the cards. In Lebanon, Mike Rossi, Action News 15. Sports is next tonight on that Controversy continues within that city's Fire Bureau. Action News reporter Mike Rossi has the latest developments. It was supposed to be a meeting to work out differences between the Reading Bureau of Fire and officials from the local firefighters union. But the meeting never happened. Union President John Gawambek canceled the meeting and has turned up the heat in his union's ongoing battle with Fire Bureau administrators. Gawambek says Councilman Frank McCracken, director of the Fire Bureau, is to blame for the latest in a long line of disputes between the two sides. Originally, when we scheduled the meeting, uh, there was only supposed to be uh, Director McCracken and uh, the president of local me, the personnel director, and the grievance chairman. Subsequently, at a later meeting, it was changed that he's going to bring all the administrators that caused these problems. So it wasn't conducive to good negotiations. Today's meeting was supposed to have resolved several grievances filed by the union and potentially save taxpayers tens of thousands of dollars in legal fees. But now those grievances will go to arbitration, and the relationship between the union and management has gone from bad to worse. This is a war, a war. and it's a war perpetuated by uh, fire administration to break the union. There has been and continues to be a willingness to meet. I think the citizens continue to see uh, there's an unwillingness on the other side. The growing number of labor disputes has helped deplete the Fire Bureau's 1994 budget of $77,000. The legal cost to the city is about $5,000 per arbitration case. The next round of arbitration takes place later this month. In Reading, Mike Rossi, Action News 15. It's an opportune violence and weapon use seems to be a more frequent combination. The city of Reading is saying absolutely no more to guns in the city schools. As Action News reporter Mike Rossi tells us tonight, they're taking some tough steps to implement their new no-tolerance policy. The city of Reading is saying no more tonight to guns in the schools. As Action News reporter Mike Rossi tells us, they're implementing a new program in their city schools saying no tolerance. School administrators in Berks County are welcoming a new program that is aimed at keeping weapons out of schools. Under this policy, students found in the possession of a weapon will be turned over to police and held in jail for 72 hours. This zero-tolerance policy is new to most of the schools in the county, but Reading High School has had a similar program in effect for several years. We've had a, a great cooperative effort with the Reading Police Force uh, in the past that uh, we've always contacted the police and had had the, the students arrested if we found a weapon in school. Uh, I think the students know uh, it's just like anything else in uh, society. For example, the sobriety road checks that we have along the way. People know that it's for the good of everyone that it makes the state road safe for everyone. I think what we're doing here is make school safe for everyone. As part of the school zero tolerance policy, students may be searched for weapons at any time. And while there is some negative reaction to those searches, the students I spoke with overall think they're a good idea. Well, most students feel that it is embarrassing, but we realize it is necessary for our own protection. It's necessary, but I never really felt threatened going to school because I knew that this was a safe place. I just think that this is an added bonus to make sure that our stay here at school is safe. 
So far, school officials at Reading High haven't caught any student carrying a gun. Several knives have been confiscated. And while this zero-tolerance policy may be embarrassing and inconvenient to students, most agree it's a policy that will keep the school safe. In Reading, Mike Rossi, Action News 15. Well, the crime that would take a severe crackdown on prostitution and the spread of AIDS. Action News reporter Mike Rossi has that story tonight. Two Lebanon County politicians want stiffer sentences for AIDS-infected prostitutes. State Representatives Pete Zug and Ed Krebs want to increase penalties for prostitutes who know they are HIV positive or infected with the AIDS virus. The proposed legislation stems from the case of Victoria Cintron, an alleged HIV positive prostitute in the Lebanon area. Uh, and it seemed to me that somebody who is HIV positive and who is having sex with uh, numbers of people and who can therefore then more readily spread the HIV virus is endangering the public welfare and is endangering everyone with whom she comes into contact sexually. The current penalty for prostitution is a misdemeanor. This bill, if enacted, would increase the penalty for prostitutes who know they are HIV positive or infected with the AIDS virus to a third degree felony, a much stiffer penalty for a potentially deadly crime. In my judgment, the penalties for someone who commits prostitution while HIV positive were simply inadequate. And I wrote to our legislators and asked them to consider making those penalties more harsh. Well, we have laws on, uh, on prostitution, but most of those are misdemeanors. They're not, they're not felony. And, and this is a, an occurrence as society has, has changed and as HIV has become part of society. And uh, the person with uh, HIV can almost use uh, their illness as a weapon. The district attorney says other DAs across the state support this legislation. And Representative Krebs believes that the state legislature will pass this bill in the next session. In Lebanon, Mike Rossi, Action News 15. As the race for this year's political... There are moments when a champion becomes something even bigger, better. And for Wheaties, that moment is now. The breakfast of champions tastes better than ever. It's a better toasted wheat taste. A bigger crunch. The new taste of Wheaties. The breakfast of champions just got better. The reliable office copier is a Minolta office copier. In fact, on selected Minolta Pro Series copiers, there's a no-risk guarantee. And with Conestoga copiers, you get... Wednesday afternoon at 4 on TV 15. This is WLYH TV 15. Live from WLYH TV, this is Action News at 6. Serving Lancaster, Lebanon, York, Harrisburg, Reading, and the entire Susquehanna Valley with the latest in news, sports, and weather. And now for Action News, here's Cara Jambrone. Good evening. It's Tuesday, October 18th. In the news, Lebanon City residents could be kidding, getting rid of a controversial eyesore in their community, and new technologies are revealed at Fort Indian Town Gap. But the big story on Action News tonight is a face-off in the Pennsylvania gubernatorial race. The five folks vying for the top spot in the Commonwealth square off in Philadelphia in just about an hour tonight in a second televised gubernatorial debate. Top runners Republican Tom Ridge and Democrat Mark Single will meet with third party candidates independent Peg Lutzig, Patriot Tim Holloway, and Libertarian Pat Fallon for a discussion on the issues at hand. The candidates met earlier in this campaign season in a public safety debate in Lingle's.